What's up, guys? Welcome back to Ben Goose Gaming. I'm TF Goose here with Vendetta, and we are bringing you the first in a new series, Let's Play, today with a little something different, actually, than you may have seen. We're kind of trying something out here. We're basically uh, going for a series to build all the different great works, starting off with the Arcology in this first uh, set of videos here. But both Vendetta and I are playing in this region. And we're going to kind of flip back and forth between our cities as we're playing them live here for you to kind of show, you know, what we're doing at the same time and how we're working together to try to put together the Arcology in the most efficient uh, way that we can and having some fun and everything along the way. So we're starting off here on uh, Vendetta City. And Vendetta, what are you, uh, you're just, you know, basically just get your basic layout here in the beginning. Yeah, I'm going for my basic zones. I'm going with the... Uh... I'm sorry. <laughs> kind of, kind of gridish. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going with the basic grid, and you can see there. I started with a little of the high density highway. That's just because I didn't want to put an intersection right away. Then I followed that up with the medium density. Yeah, I've been doing that myself lately. I, I toyed around with some of the, uh, you know, some of the other, you know, guides and vids and stuff out there. I've been talking about kind of trying to use like low density at the beginning and such. Yeah. But really, it seems to me like. You know, medium density is fine. You don't grow too insanely fast at the beginning anyway. Even if you start off with low density, you know, it doesn't seem to be that different than if you just go straight for the medium and you pick out a couple loans at the beginning if you have to, and then bang, you know, you just get started right away. So, yeah, a strategy I like to do is uh, I like to go for like two loans in the beginning. The you can only get twenty five thousand initially. Right. Then I, then I like to leave my third one empty until I can get a department of finance and turn around and put in a 100k loan, pay off the other two, and then pull out another 100k on each of those. That really gets you a lot of starting capital to work with. That's a, yeah, that's actually a really cool idea there. Because honestly, I've never even messed with that 100k loan myself unless I'm building a second city or a third city in a region where I've already built the Department of Finance. Yeah. It's like, after my initial loans, I often forget about that potential to get more, but it's definitely a good strategy sometimes to pay off existing ones and then get a different one, especially if you're in need of some fast funds. Exactly, and that's what I like to do because it helps spur your city development a lot faster. I mean, I'd hate to produce a video for you guys, you know, 30 minutes of me just sitting here, you know, <laughs> waiting for money to tick in. Yeah. So that's the strategy I use. <laughs> yeah, it's so exciting. You just sit there and wait, especially yes. since there's no uh, no cheetah speed here still. Unfortunately, some of the uh, game issues, you know, still continue a little bit, and we're having to deal with that. You know, uh, so one of those remaining things is no cheetah speed. You still have to play on the second speed level, which is Llama, I believe, here. But, yeah. uh, you Something know. Something I should point out, too, is we are playing on patch 1.7, which is the traffic fix for you guys that don't know. They uh, fixed emergency vehicles. They'll now go into empty lanes, and uh, delivery trucks also have priority over regular traffic. From what I can tell, I looked at both my tourism city and my electronic city. The traffic fixes seem to be doing really well. It definitely helped on the emergency vehicles. That's something that was so needed to just... Yeah, it was totally busted. Oh my god, seriously, it totally was. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where it was, you know, just chair throwing time sometimes when you're sitting there like there's a building burning down. Like I, This is one of my favorite scenarios. I actually saw this, I think, uh, over in my city at one point. But there was a burning building on one side of the street, a fire truck's coming down the other side of the street, and it's got to pull that U-turn so it can get over there and actually put out the fire, oh. and it's stuck in a traffic jam. Yeah, yeah. that is absolutely terrible. It, yeah, it, it's just ridiculous. So I'm so glad that they put some thought into that, you know, and made it so uh, we don't have to worry about that quite as much anymore. Um, just one other thought here, too. Uh, as you'll see when we flash over to, to my city, I'm trying to go for more of a sort of power and water and sewage provider for the entire region. But at the beginning of the game, if you're both trying to build cities at the same time, that doesn't work real well. So Vendetta here is having to supply his own power and water and stuff for a little while until I get that cooking in my city. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the server sync to pop up. That takes generally a couple minutes. So that's why, like uh, TF Goose was saying there, I went ahead and placed the power and water. 
I see you uh, name your city Electronica here too, because we're going for uh, an electronic city here because the arcology requires a ridiculous number of TVs. I think it's like 65,000 tons or 60,000. Yeah, 60,000 crates. Yeah, of, crates uh, of TVs. TVs. Ridiculous. So uh, getting electronic city going is uh, a way to, to go for that. And besides, as you may have seen in a couple of our other videos, Vendetta happens to be awesome at making electronic cities. So, <laughs> yeah, I figured it out pretty quickly. Nope. I'll go into a little more detail here later in the video on kind of some steps. That would be perfect. Yeah, because more step-by-step -step instruction on that I think would be uh, appreciated by some of the viewers. I know you guys have been mentioning some of that in the comments and such, and some of our feedback. Which, by the way, guys, uh, I did want to say thanks so much for uh, the positive response we've gotten so far. As you know. This is a relatively new channel, and we're just kind of giving this thing a whirl, trying to do some some fun content for you guys in this dual commentary style. And it seems to be going over really well, and we really appreciate the uh, warm reception. So thank you for that. Really. Absolutely. I can't reiterate that enough. You know, we love doing this stuff for you guys, and it's, it's great to see all the positive feedback we've gotten. Definitely, definitely. And uh, even in the midst of the, the troubled times of EA and, and Maxis with this game, at least it's getting better. You know, I, there's still some issues, but we're having more fun with it. You know, day and you know, day after day here, because it seems like with every patch, they are making the game more and more playable and kind of closer to that magic experience that we were all hoping it would be from day one, but that we're seeming to have to limp towards right now. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's almost like the Titanic. We're just barely steering away from the iceberg. Yeah, <laughs> patch by patch. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt, man. So, uh, but. As you know, starting off right, oh, you're, so you're getting this too. The the Maxis man prompt over there on your city hall. That, so annoying. It pops up so fast, you know, because I think you just got to get like 500 residents or something like that, you know, and then or maybe even just 250, and you got to just move forward with it. And they want you to build Maxis man. He's so expensive at the beginning. There's just no point. But flash over here to my city and figure, you know. As per standard, we start off with poop, you know, <laughs> why not, you know? <laughs> yeah, it looks like you got your sewage going there. Yeah, I named this town Aquavolt Plains because of the uh, intent to revive water and power, but I was doing sewage as well. I almost named it Brown Town, you know? <laughs> I thought that would be all right, but, eh, you know, whatever, maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, also looks like you were having a couple beers when you were drawing these, uh, these, uh, rectangles you know here. seriously uh sometimes it's a little hazy at night that's all you know <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem no it's uh <laughs> i did try to to draw a little bit something different here and there it, and by try i mean of course that i laid it wrong and then just decided to go with it <laughs> we've all had that happen i'm sure yeah it, it happens sometimes but i didn't like the little uh the little offshoot that's over there by my first water tower uh, but okay. I was trying to get close to what is maybe a river over there to try and get that infinite water source. I don't know if you, you guys may not know this, but if there's a river running through your city, and it has to be a river, not like an ocean area or a, a lake or something, but if it's an actual river, that's an infinite water source. It should provide water forever, or at least it's supposed to do that. So I wasn't sure if that one sort of hanging out on the edge of the map there would really count. But I wanted to get over there at least and try and tap that source, and we'll see how that works out uh, a little later, and certainly in later videos in this series, we'll uh, we'll best. Square that tool work. is your friend. Yeah, square tool is great. Um, but I was trying. I knew I wasn't going to be able to link that road up with the square tool right there, so I decided to try and you know. Oh, this use... road design. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is going to make Vendetta just cry because <laughs> you're so all about efficiency. I know. Oh. I so wanted to get a little, like, watch this here. Yeah, I do the little curvy thing. I'm like, hey, you know, why not? Put a little house right there. Isn't that nice? Come on. That's some beachside residential. I'd love to live that's there. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what I figured. And this right here, too, guys, uh, for the parks. Yeah, see, I was going with a little bit uh, richer placement here. That's what I was going for to maybe make the beachside a little bit better. But you'll notice all over my map, those little strip parks that are right there above it. Those are the medium wealth nature $100 strip park that thing is awesome because it has a radius about as big as what I'm putting down now but it costs a hundred and it's for medium wealth those things are sweet I love them I put them everywhere because they're so cheap 
and they do such a great job. So definitely keep those in mind if you're building your city. Of course, you can be more diverse, you know, if, if you like, but you just can't beat the radius of those things for the cost. They're so sweet. I love them. I those love are, those, yeah, those are fantastic. I don't do a lot of medium wealth. For some reason, I, I tend to be more of a low wealth person. So I go with the barbecue huts, as you guys have seen in all of our videos. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, you love your city barbecue. It's like crazy. But okay, yeah, there's Maxis Manor. If you don't know this tip, guys, if you don't want a quest, you can click on it, get the quest, and then just click the little red X next to it, and it'll just shut up and go away, which was what I was aiming for there. So I'm noticing I do have a little bit of a traffic issue here already. It happens, you know, but I'm not that concerned about it at the beginning of a, a map here. It's just sort of going to be the way of things, especially on the main drag there. And I didn't want to uh, put too many intersections there towards the front. As Vendetta said, that's not really a great idea. You want to handle traffic issues in your city and not try to build up too much towards the front of your connection to the highway because then you'll back up onto the highway and that just, you know, sucks. So here I am having a little bit more trouble with roads, but... I I'm trying to, to uh, <laughs> reserve from laughing all over the mic <laughs> because this is a... It's crooked, and then you bulldoze that part, but then you draw over here where you're drawing right now. <laughs> it's still crooked! <laughs> I, Why? I did that just for you, man. I wanted. To I bet sure. you did. I did. I saw. I had that little teeny thing. I'm like, you know what? I could bulldoze that and do it again, but Vendetta will love this. It's straight on one side and crooked on the other. <laughs> and I left that little nub out there with my medium... Uh, <laughs> my medium avenue there too for you i thought you might oh like that. that's fantastic isn't that nice <laughs> wait to see a little later with my connections up to the the top there i think you'll enjoy those too but you know you make it's, me cry inside <laughs> just a little bit just a little bit that's all right you got to keep some tears man <laughs> keep those ducks flowing that's all right but you know you can do the all uber efficiency cities a ton and those are great and they're fun but occasionally you know, when you make a little mistake like that, or you can even plan for a little bit weird design and can give a little character to your city. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I give you a hard time, but I've seen lots of really cool looking circular cities <coughs> and a lot of curvy roads. There's by no means anything wrong with that. It's just not personally my play style. I like the, I'm the very traditional SimCity player. I like the grid. That's just me. <laughs> and, and also, I will say, of course, yeah, nothing wrong with that either. So play the game the way you guys want to, but you have to, of course, keep in mind traffic patterns, traffic flow. Obviously, that's an issue for me right now. But again, uh, 1,600 people in the town, I don't really care at the beginning of the game. All I'm trying to do is get that green figure at the bottom to go up as high as I can at the beginning. And I do go ahead and add one more intersection there instead of, I could have done the two, but I went with the one just to alleviate some of that. But I did go ahead and make it a high density street. That way, at least it's, uh, you know, got the traffic lights there to help with the traffic flow. But that's going to be the last intersection I want to put towards the front right now. I yeah, because you've already got three. Yeah, I only did that just because it was getting so egregious in the middle there. And while I don't care about it right now, it could have been a problem later. So might as well go ahead and throw it in. And then uh, later on, we're going to have streetcars and stuff anyway. So, you know, it's not going to be a thing. Yeah, streetcars being the awesome, awesome way to, to do Best it. transportation in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, so, so nice, and everybody can use it. What did you have in your one power, like 120,000 streetcar riders? Yeah, I had over 125,000 people riding my streetcars on one of my cities. Let's see, that's, that's out of control. You're, I, I want to point out to guys, that, or to people right now, though, you are pulling down 6,100 an hour in a city of less than 2,500 people. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it, it's all. I've done this all the time. I've become, in my opinion, I am the most comfortable in the lower population cities, and you're sort of the, the opposite. You like to crank up the population as high as possible. But I have a lot of fun just keeping things kind of tiny for a little while and trying to see how far I can drive up that hourly figure. And you'll see as it goes on here, it gets a lot better even. It's, it's wild. But, uh, and also that's, that's about proper tax planning too. You know, you definitely want to uh, show the taxes correctly, you know, and use the taxes correctly. I think we show that a little bit later in the video, but there's an, an optimum tax rate. I think the distribution is 12, 11, 10 across low, medium, high in that order. 
and uh, that'll get you your max tax revenue without people, you know, packing up and leaving town because they're ticked at you. So. Yeah, I think that doesn't impact growth too. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that still allows them to grow. They'll complain a little bit probably about high rent, but overall, that is the optimal tax range. Yeah, yeah. Right when you raise the taxes, they can you know, gripe just a little bit, but as long as you don't go over those figures for those particular wealth classes, and you can only get those particular ones with that Department of Finance, by the way. Which uh, you guys can see me lay down. Right. So uh, it, once you do that, though, as long as you don't go over that figure, they won't actually, you know, get unhappy. They won't reach the point where they're actually losing happiness because of the taxes. So even if they gripe a little bit, don't worry about it. It's like them, you know, saying, oh, I'll just turn up my oven to 800 degrees because I'm a moron, you know. Sometimes <laughs> they just do that, you know, so no big deal. But as you see, yeah, we're back over in uh, Vendetta City here, and he's just, you know, laying the basic services. This is just standard stuff, guys. you you got to get your basic stuff done, and here he is sharing some ambulances with me. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it so much. I will take your sickly. <laughs> Definitely, I I need it seriously but uh, and again yeah guys remember definitely always volunteer those service vehicles there's just no penalty for doing that you can send your fire your medical and your police and your trash those core four utility and safety vehicles right there over to any other city in your region or, or your sector there that you're connected with and it does not impact your coverage in your own city very very important to remember there's no reason not to do that so yeah that's a pro tip and there you are demolishing your uh, your water and power because you're getting it from me, I imagine, here at this stage. Yeah, I finally, I finally got it to sync up, so I went ahead and demolished that right there. I wanted to kind of expand my residential a little bit more. You guys can see me turning off the road guide there because it didn't want to quite snap to where I wanted it. You can just press Alt and it'll take away that guide. Yeah, as just like a uh, temporary thing, if you hold down Alt, it'll it'll get rid of it for you. Or there's a little check mark down there at the bottom left, usually when you're laying those two, and you can turn it off for good if you want to turn it off for a while without having to hold the button. But yeah, I've already laid down two oil uh, wells. Or yeah, that's what they're called. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, er, what are they called? It's a single syllable word, I think. No, we got it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, two oil wells with four pumps each. That's to get my trade going. This city has a uh, a large, large oil deposit underneath of it. So I was just trying to get that income because as you guys can see, I'm only making 649 an hour, which is terrible. But look at your money. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's from a loan, most of it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, so, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. There's the oil reserve. So, obviously, that's huge. So, yeah. Definitely trade is going to be, you know, the, the way to go. And is Vendetta's specialty? This is how he makes his money, is just going crazy on trade. And when you're going to do an electronic city, it's absolutely critical to get this going. And if you have a huge natural resource like this oil in the deposit in this town, you simply have to take advantage of it. You know, there's just no reason not to. You don't want to import the more expensive, you know, components to those high-end pieces of electronics when you can just make them yourself. If you mine up the oil and then transform it into fuel with plastic, like we're going to do later here, then you've got one of those huge components knocked out, and you don't need to go out to the global market and buy them. Yeah, depending on how many or how much mass production you're going to do, you're going to have to import some. But this is just me starting my kind of trade empire, if you will. And I'm just going to go ahead and start out with oil. The goal here is to lay down the petroleum HQ and trade enough oil out to unlock the like second tier of that. What that's going to allow me to do is then produce fuel and plastic. Then further, I can lay down a, uh, a trade headquarters and that will right. allow me to do even more and, you know, kind of go from there. Yeah, then it just sort of kind of sky's the limit, really, at that point. So, But, yeah, those initial stages is what's important. You want to pick your, your bottom barrel. <laughs> Pun. See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. No, your, your uh, loads here, resources, we'll call them. And then uh, make the most of those and get your initial trading done there, obviously. And then, yeah, just unlock those HQs, in this case, the petroleum one. You know, if you're mining ore or coal, then you might go with a metals HQ or something of that nature. 
and get to you can you know get it so you can uh, unlock the trading and you know port storage and such for those higher higher materials and then you can just start rolling in cash and as you'll see probably later on and certainly in uh, a couple of our other videos the hourly rate that you're able to maintain means nothing if you can get some serious trade going oh gosh you got some issue there huh yeah a little was, bit yeah it was not one in cooperate so i think i'll just bulldoze it per oh yeah perfect sorry eminent domain folks <laughs> <laughs> i am not afraid of the bulldozer tool if you guys learn nothing else from me know that <laughs> You know what's really <laughs> what's really great too is I swear when you were mousing over some of those houses just a little bit ago, I saw the Capsarellis residence, which is oh yeah, which is in reference to Kip Capsarellis, one of the lead developers on SimCity, and I think he just demolished his house. <laughs> oh no, I'm just kidding. I like Kip. Yeah. No. <laughs> so oh okay, but that's not you know cattywampus at all there. No, that's don't fine. judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> Hey, you're pulling out all the criticisms on my city, man. <laughs> I just rezone it for commercial. It's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, the people don't want to live there, but we can put a donut shop there, no problem, right? Exactly. You know, serve that up with a Dunkin'. Who cares? Chipotle is going in. <laughs> That's right. Because everybody's like, oh, where's the shopping? Where? Yeah, well, it, it seems like you can never get those demand bars to just shut up. You know, there, there's yeah. always something that someone wants. I, I don't know that I've ever had it just bottomed out on demand bars. If any of you guys that listen to this have ever managed to do that, I'd love to see, you know, a video or a screenshot where someone has, uh, you know, just no demand. Where everyone's like, no, nah, we're cool. It's great. Thanks, <laughs> Everybody's man. Everybody's happy. This is great. Yeah. You want to increase taxes? You know, <laughs> you know, so uh, I'd love to see something like that, but I just I haven't yet. So <laughs> I love to hear that at 10, th I just dinged 10,000 people that they're already asking for mass transit. They can suck it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Not yeah. doing it. <laughs> You're like, seriously, guys, walk. Yeah. Get a bike or something. Go to school. Go to school <laughs> as, as we do that with, you know, no education built in the city yet. But, you know. Aha. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. We'll get there. That's right. <laughs> the city is young. Exactly, exactly. So later on, mass transit will become critical, too critical, but right now, not nearly as important. And yeah, you are. You're crushing on your population. I don't remember where I got to. I will flash over back to my city here in just a moment, but uh, I know I'm nowhere close to you. So. Yeah, you're crushing me on money, though. I mean, I, I, I'm not factoring in the trade, but in raw, you know, dollars per hour. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just, a, you know, six to one, half a dozen another, though, because as we said, you know, you're going to get to the point in this city when you're going heavy trade, it's going to be absolutely crazy. And I guarantee you guys, seriously, you know, a couple of videos down the line here on this series, watch Vendetta's cash flow. It's going to be completely bananas. Oh, I'll crush him. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be <laughs> upset. I'm going to be looking at my cash flow and I could be pulling down 20000 an hour. You know, yeah. and I'm still not going to be anywhere close to this fool. He's going to be out of control with this trade stuff. So, with an Alox, anyway, an electronic city, guys. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is the you can build a great works for the most part single-handedly. I mean, it really is that overpowered right now. I think they're going to nerf that in the future, though. That being said, but uh, they right might now, need to honestly, yeah, yeah, because. Uh, Honestly, if you guys haven't seen this before, it's entirely possible to make so much money, you know, with your electronic city and, or in trading in general, that you can just here we go flashing back over. Um, it's entirely possible to make so much money that you can just crank taxes down to low single digits or even zero, and people are just happy as clams living there, no matter what the conditions. They can be dying by the hundreds, and yeah. There's yeah, I've seen some interesting posts on Reddit as well about that. People have, like, actually summoned disasters and nuked their cities, but they turned their taxes down to zero, and the people still want to live there. I think that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, and that's something that honestly should probably be addressed because I don't think it's in the spirit of of the game or, or what the developers were hoping to bring to the table here. Yeah, um, but I agree. Anyway, so back over uh, onto my city here. I just upgraded my center path, and I'm just going up to volunteer some some stuff to, to Vendetta here and repay the favor. 
going through each of the uh, services there, just like we were saying earlier. But I upgraded the main drag for my avenue there up to a high density street, and then eventually it will go up to a high density street car. I don't think we're not going to get to the street car's actual installation in this video, but uh, we'll probably get to that one next time. But this is just more about trying to get that basic infrastructure in place. And if you look down there, guys, we're at you know 12,000, you know, going up to towards 13,000 an hour here, and which is excellent. Yeah, which is exactly where I want to be at this stage of the game, you know, and I'm doing that. This is strictly, strictly RCI. There's no trade going on here at all. It's just all taxes. That's it. But again, that tax structure, 12, 11, 10, do not charge your high wealth people more taxes. It may seem to make sense to you that they should be able to pay more, especially if you're a Democrat. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, that's not how they react in SimCity. They they want the lower tax rate. If you don't give it to them, they'll just leave, you know. So go with 12, 11, 10, and they'll never give you a lip about it, and you'll be able to maintain some really nice income and get things rolling in a relatively short period of time. I mean, this is, you know, this is a half-hour video, guys. You know, and we played at the exact same time. So you can get your city into this shape with this kind of an income on just RCI or in the shape that Vendetta City is in and living off of trade in a very, very short period of time. So. Like like we were saying before, it's just, I used the trick with the Department of Finance. That's the first department I laid down. Which department did you put down? Utilities? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did utilities first myself just because I knew that my goal here for this city was to provide, you know, water, power, sewage for the region. So I wanted to make sure I got the ability to build like the enhanced uh, water pumping station and the sewage treatment plant and such. Which makes total sense. Yeah. And this is an interesting strategy for everybody else out there as well. If you're trying to do this kind of city to kind of provide resources to other cities so you don't have to do all of those services because that really saves you money. I can tell you guys firsthand from my tourism city that was key not having to build power and water and sewage that helped me so much starting out with my income it was amazing yeah that's absolutely critical if you can keep yourself from having to have that you know that monthly drain on those services you pay a little bit oh here's my favorite quest in the game right here i love this one 25 grand for the garbage pickup watch this i i'd spend a lot of time watching this this is fun but uh it's you do get a little bit of a monthly or you know a drain when uh, someone you know supplies power. It's going to show me a lot of the time that you're sending me money for water and power and yada yada. But it's so small. I mean, it's it's nothing. I would argue it needs to be tweaked because as it stands right now, I don't really think you're getting enough money for what it costs to provide, especially if you're doing like coal or oil. Because you know it's forty well on NA East three, which is the server we're playing on, it's forty five hundred bucks you know a barrel. And when you start to get into those big like coal and big oil power plants, it starts to take a lot of resources. So I think they should adjust that personally. Oh, they chew it up. <laughs> like coal and oil just vanish, you know, when you're trying to to supply, especially on the the higher, you know, production towers. I mean, there's a couple of them that are more efficient. Yeah. But a couple of them aren't, you know. But, uh, yeah, you can definitely chew through some resources, and it would be nice to pick up a little bit more from the region for it. But I suppose there's something to be said for making it a benefit to providing it to other things. So still something they could look at, but perhaps a little tweaking there. Yeah, I just think you should get paid a little more for providing those things. Nuclear is kind of an interesting option. It provides the most power in the game with the... Uh, the Level two neuron or new, not neutron, neuron, neutron, neutron, yeah, yeah, the neutron. It's the thinking nuke. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so with the neutron reactors, uh, you can get up to 1,800 megawatts, which may sound like a crap ton, but I can tell you guys in my major, in my other electronic city, I'm using over 600 megawatts of power. <laughs> I have, that, that I have, blows my mind, seriously. Yeah, I have two oil power plants fully maxed out. And that, I mean, that provides enough power, but, you know, short of that, nuclear is kind of interesting because you need so much water, and that can oh. be really frustrating. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, nuclear does take an insane amount of water. You know, you really have to pull it in from the region or, again, have one of those infinite sources, you know, and uh, just really go crazy with that. That's that's super key to, to be able to pull that but yeah the water thing i would actually weigh the oil power plant being better than nuclear just because of the water i mean you unless you have infinite you know so unless you're next to a lake 
you're not going to get it's going to be too hard to maintain yeah yeah or river yeah exactly yeah check this out too i always notice this collect 250 cans of garbage picked up 680 cans so far something's up i, I, <laughs> I don't know what's up there but notice how how hugely the, the amount of trash spiked for this event it was like under 500 cans for the previous day and then you do this event and it just goes completely bananas but if you have you know around this city size you know then uh if you have around i think five you know five trucks installed up at the uh at the garbage facility there at your dump site it's plenty they're gonna get around and grab it and there you go there's the 25k reward and and well, we'll uh we'll, we'll sign it off right there i think for the first video guys so Check back. We're going to be uploading more. Our, our typical schedule, if we haven't told you guys before, we're going to try to get at least two videos out a week. So always check back. We're constantly putting new content up. Yep. We really enjoy doing this for you guys. Can't say enough. Definitely, definitely. Appreciate it, guys. And check back soon. Check those uh, links there if you haven't seen some of our other stuff. And smack that like button if you like it. Please, we enjoy that. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. We'll see you soon.